Hello everyone, my name is Raj Kapadia and I am part of the Effort in Day Trading Group. For this video, we will be looking at how to create an indicator using the Meta Editor MQL5 application. And we will also be using this create article that we found. It's an article on how to create an indicator. Um, and this can be used to just follow along with this video just to make it easier. Um, this video will be looking into a more into more depth and in terms of um, what tools are used and what necessary um, libraries and um, properties are used in order to actually make a simple indicator. So to start off with, let's look at what indicator we will be looking. I mean, working with. It's the True Strength Index or the TSI. It's based. It's basically a index that is a double smoothed momentum oscillator that is used to identify a trend or and uh, oversold, overbought um, conditions in the market. What I mean by double smoothed is that a moving average applied to the data is smoothed again with a second moving average. So you'll actually see what this means when you look at the formula itself. So the TSI takes in three parameters, the closing price of today or the current day, R and S. So R is the EMA smoothing period for um, for momentum and um, S is the EMA smoothing period for the smooth momentum in this um, context. R, is, R will be over a period of 25 and S will be over a 13 period. This is equal to 100 times um, um, the EMA uh, over the 13 period with an initial EMA which is inside uh, that has uh, that's over a 25 period or, um, over a momentum that's um, uh, MTM. MTM is basically the closing price of today or the current day minus the closing price of yesterday. All of that is over again the same thing EMA over 13 periods uh, with an initial EMA except in this case, it's the absolute value of MTM over 25 periods. So to start off, uh, to create our indicator, let's go to the meta editor um, application. Just to give you guys a heads up, I am running this on um, remote desktop. So if by any chance there are, there are some laggy moments, um, please uh, just, um, just bear with me. Um, however, I'll try to just make it as smooth as possible. So once you start your meta editor, you'll see a window or a section that's called navigator. This is basically where you want to create an indicator, expert advisors, files, it depends. In our case, we are focused on indicators. So let's just um, right click on indicators, hit new file. Here, the MQL5 uh, wizard will open up uh, where you have basically what template you want to create. In our case, we want to create the custom indicator. Hit next, um, name it. Let's call it um, TSI test. And uh, you have an option to um, add your parameters. You can do this by um, you can do this by man like manually once this is created, or you can do it just from here. It's more simple for me to do it from here. So just uh, quick and easy. Once I hit next, uh, you'll see another prompt open up. Um, this is where um, there's a list of functions that you want to initialize. So um, <clears throat> to start off with, let's look at what onCalculate is. So onCalculate is a function that uh, handle that is a handler of the calculate event that appears when it's necessary to recalculate indicator values. In our case, you can see that there are two. The first onCalculate is more focused on the different time series. So it's more heavier, it's heavier calculation, more more um, more things to do with it, um, such as open, low, high, close prices, um, volumes, spread, period opening times. However, in our case, since we are using just um, prices in general um, for the TSI calculation, we will be looking at the second on calculate function. This one is more focused on the price itself rather than a lot of the other um, important but not necessary um, um, time series. Um, so select the second all calculate. On timer is basically a function used for the timer event and this is usually used for on init um, for the expert advisors normally during initialization for indicators for us at least uh, it's not necessary. On chart event on the other hand is something also not necessary however it's again as um, as it shows, it's for chart events. So maybe I'm um, looking at um, spikes or 
how the candle chart, chart is set up, stuff like that. So once you select the second on calculate, hit next. And this window is basically um, how you want your indicator to be displayed. We want it on a separate window and we're not going to mess around with the min and max. You can, if you want to, it's not going to harm um, the indicator itself. It's just how do you want to plot it on what scale? Uh, we do the plot section is basically how do you want to um, plot your indicator in terms of visual. So um, label it as TSI. The type is a line. Uh, you can change it if you want from here. And the color, I'd like to change it to blue. It's a good color. Uh, um, so once you're done with that, go ahead and hit finish. And the TSI test has been created. So as you can see, some default properties are, have created on and it is there and on calculate is there. So to start off with, let's look at what has happened up here. Um, this is self-explanatory. This, These are basically the options that we selected, it's just being displayed here. Um, we want it on a separate window, um, the number of buffers. In our case, we're going to have more buffers because there's more calculations to do. And buffers in general are just um, dynamic storage that we need. Um, the number of plots. So in our case, we're just plotting one line. We don't need more lines. Um, the label, um, TSI, the type. Again, it can be histogram, some other. Um, the color the type of line it is, solid, dotted, and the width. These are the parameters that we had chosen and the buffer that has been initialized. The on ended function, again, it's just uh, initializing our, um, it just runs when initializing our indicator itself. Um, here, we just want to return zero. So make that change quickly. And on calculate is where most of our calculations will be taking place. So to start off with, we need to add some buffers. As I mentioned, that there, there are going to be a lot of buffers that we are working with, um, mainly because of the, how the um, how the um, the formula has been set up. So basically, we are selecting six buffers at, at the moment. I'm just going to copy paste um, these uh, very quickly. I just to keep in mind, I will be going back and forth and copying pasting a lot of code only because um, writing this from scratch um, will be taking will take longer and I'll try my best to explain each line as much as I can. As you can see, I've added six more buffers. So I'm just going to um, update the indicator buffers. Um, these buffers are basically it's out of the formula itself. Um, so we have an MTM buffer basically to calculate MTM. We have one for the absolute value of MTM. We have the EMA, and we have a second EMA, that's the EMA of this EMA. We have an EMA for the absolute value, and the second EMA that's going to smooth this EMA. I know it sounds uh, like a handful. However, if you um, plot this against the formula itself, you'll see why and how these um, buffers are being used. So now we need to go ahead and, and initialize these buffers. So we're just going to copy paste this. Go ahead and paste it here, my bad. And there you go. So this is again just initializing a bunch of a lot of these buffers and um, giving them an index and what type of what it is used for. So in this case, it's a calculations. Um, going to on calculate in our case, um, it has four, I guess, uh, predefined properties. It's um, range total, which is the high plus low plus close divided by three, the previous calculated, what we um, just basically the previous calculated um, um, The previous cal sorry, I blanked out for a second. But that's the previous calculated um, calculation. Um, this is uh, again just a, a type of I wouldn't say pointer, but um, like start begin where do you want where you're starting from and the price area that we will be working with. Um, so to start off with, we're going to also include a library that's very important. It is the um, Oh my, God. sorry. Um, so I, because I'm working on a Mac, it has some issues with copy pasting at times. Uh, so bear with me with that. So this is the moving average library. Um, it's basically used to um, 
It's basically used uh, for the moving averages itself. So there are four types of moving averages, uh, simple moving average, exponential moving average, uh, smoothing, smooth moving average, and linear moving with linear weighted moving average. Within this library, there are eight functions in total. There are four that just do a normal calculation of those and there's four that work with a buffer. In our case, we're gonna, so the first group and the second group, we are going to work with the second group. And from that, we are going to work very closely with the exponential MA on buffer function. This is where we want to actually use our buffer, work with the price array, and uh, accordingly um, set, the, um, set the necessary parameters in terms of which, um, what period we're using and where we're starting from. So to start off with that, let's uh, let's copy paste this. This is the initial um, EMA that we're calculating. So that's the 25 period EMA and the absolute value 25 period EMA. So I'm going to go ahead and within on calculate, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this. I'll try to copy this and paste this. So as I said, just the first wave of EMA that we have created. Um, so this is um, the initial index that we're starting from uh, where the smoothing should begin um, the period that we've given what buffer we are working with um, because we're using the MTM buffer to um, as you'll see we are going to add um, average the average of the MTM calculation within this buffer and we're ending up locating it into this buffer same with the um, absolute value so we will go. We will go ahead and just uh, copy paste this as well. <clears throat> this is the second wave of um, EMA that we're working with, and this is the one that's going to be used to. Um, this is the one that will be that is going to be used to actually smooth, smoothen out the EMA. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyways, so same um, same calculations are being made here as well. Um, as you can see, um, it's taking in a new starting. However, it's over a thirteen period for the same, and it respectively puts it into into the buffer as uh, needed. Um, once that is done, uh, we want to make sure that we have a um, I guess base cases um, approved, I mean, not approved out, but base cases taken care of. So for example, right here, um, to start off, if, if it's the first call, then we want to make sure that, um, we want to make sure that, <clears throat> that uh, if it's the first call, we want to set our buffers to zero, of course, because we do not want to have any other data if it uh, does start again um, next we want to uh, just um, fill in the MTM buffer so we want to do the calculations uh, for the MTM buffer and the absolute value of MTM buffer and just store it into that buffer so that when we're using it on the EMA this is where we're getting the um, calculations from there you go so we have a start that's basically the start index and it as you go to through the price array and um, do the calculation it stores it within the um, buffer itself the next thing uh, we need and this is by the end uh, or near the end is the um, the final calculation that we're storing within the TSI buffer. Because again, like I said, we've, we've broken this down into different parts or different sections um, to calculate all of this. And um, just to, oh my God, just to have a better visualization of what ha what is happening. You can see that the, we're using the absolute value buffer of the second um, EMA and the EMA of the first, I mean, the second EMA of the MTM buffer um, so that 
when we're going through this loop, we're just, you know, we're using the smoothed averages. I mean, the, yeah, the smoothed, the 13 period smoothed averages um, for the calculation itself. And we're finally just returning that read. So again, um, there's um, one more thing. There's a few more things before we go ahead, but I will, I already have um, a TSI indicator that I, we created um, before. I'm just gonna switch to that just so that we don't have to copy paste much more. Um, as you can see here, in the on init, we have a few more, I guess, functions that we are using. It's These are mainly just um, initializing how and where the, in, not the indicator, but um, where the, the line starts. So the plot index set integer, this is just uh, initializing where the drawing begins. As you can see, um, this is the value it's starting from. Um, this is the name that it's um, being assigned uh, or the label. Um, this is the name that's being added to, oh no, this is the name that's being added to the window since we have a separate window itself. Um, this is the name added to the um, sub window and this is the decimal points we are using. So once all of this is added, as you can see, nothing has changed, it's still the same. Uh, we are going to go ahead and just hit compile. I will save this. And um, as you can see, there are zero warnings, zero errors. That's a good sign. Hit compile. Um, and once that is, just hit the uh, green run button. This will open up the MQL5 application, as you can see. Um, it's going to be like, it will, this is a pop-up necessarily for uh, what you want to do with the indicator that is going to be applied. Um, as you can see, the inputs that have already been added. Um, the parameter we're going to do you want to work with the closing price the typical price in our case We do have to work with the typical price as you remember the parameter we are using is the um, um, oh, Sorry, uh, the parameter we are using is the rates total which is the high plus low plus close over three as I mentioned before and the colors levels I mean not levels but color is the other thing again these things were pre are the default things that we added um, so once that is done just hit ok and you can see that the TSI has been plotted for us um, it's plotted against the euro to USD and yeah that is basically how you can create a quick and simple indicator here in the indicator window below you see it's a, a 25 to 13 um, what is it called the 25 to 13 um, TSI so yeah um, as I mentioned the article itself uh, is helpful it does go um, it does sh look into um, what what TSI does and how the TSI was created however this just gave an overview of um, how you can start your t um, indicator and what the basics of creating the indicator. So that should be all. Thank you.